Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. What you see is what I've been looking forward to since last year. This is my favorite crop to plant in all the world. Not corn, not soybeans, crimson clover. This is my, by far my favorite thing to plant. I don't know why, I just love it. I'm gonna be using my solo seed spreader. I've had this thing for quite some time. Just got a nice grasshopper. See you. Anyway, I'm gonna put a link to this. I use this so much on this channel. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link permanently in all my videos so that you can get you one for yourself because if if you know what I went through with them old bag planters and cedars, they have plastic gears that strip out something awful. I've had them strip out the day I bought them. Not so with this gentleman. I've used him for a couple years now, three years probably with great success, no worries. Now here's the part that Farm Off Fanatic needs to listen up on. We're not just coming out here and throwing some crimson clover in the ground and calling it good. We're going to be also throwing in some wheat. This wheat is going to trigger the crimson clover and tell it, buddy, you need to be making nitrogen, and it will. Last year, I put oats in here with my crimson clover, and it did great. This year, I'm gonna put wheat in with my crimson clover, and it's gonna do great. How much crimson clover do I put per acre? I'm gonna guess I'm gonna have two acres in this field, and I'm putting 200 pounds. So I guess you could say 100 pound per acre. That's what I'm doing. The wheat, I go half, 50 pounds per acre. You don't want to overpopulate it with wheat because that's not where you're going. You're going with crimson clover. The wheat just triggers it. But first, I've got to get in here and i got to disc it up. I've got a lot of bare soil here just fine, no problem. But I'm going to disc it up. I've got ridges. See this, Eric? There's ridges. I don't have a calder. I don't have anything called a hiller, but my cultivator hills anyway. I only cultivated this twice because we had so much rain in the spring. I just barely got it done the second time before another big rain hit. And look at the hills. There's nothing wrong with my cultivator. I'm pretty proud of how it works, but I got to knock these hills down, knock these stalks, this stubble down, get me some fresh soil up and once i get the seed in the ground i'm gonna pack it i don't want to disc it again and cover the seed too deep i want it to come up quick we're supposed to have a rain here tonight and tomorrow so this is perfect let's get out here and do it
up, it ain't the easiest thing in the world. So instead of doing a field at a time, I just did all at once. Now, this year, this is a very simple part of the deal. Just gonna spread this seed and get it packed. That's by far the most physically laborious, but hey, no problem. Yep, 90% germination. The coating is 34% of what's in this bag. 65.37% pure feed, seed, so you lose a lot, but the way I plant, I plant it so thick anyway, it don't matter. I plant so thick, some people just can't believe it. But I believe it because I've been doing it so long. At this point, we're just going to throw it on, and here we go. By the time I get done with this, I'm going to be a warm young man. witnessed in a minute or two of time-lapse footage took me two hours and 15 minutes of constant walking and spreading. You can bet your bottom dollar McGee is ready to sit down on that tractor seat and pack this in. I say let's do it. Driving this tractor, packing this, these three fields, actually took an hour, exactly a solid hour. So when I think back over planting it, 
it I planted it twice once over with clover once over with wheat I did not pack it twice I went I did not even overlap I packed it once so technically this thing only really beat me by 15 minutes McGee was hoofing it all right this is the crimson clover video and interestingly enough what i like is i always leave the center of the field in this field to save for seed and for bread corn because out in the middle like this it's a lot less apt to be destroyed by coons possums squirrels are very vicious on your on your field edges different things like that so you can see this is what the center of the field looked like. It wasn't anything special as far as field location. No fertilize except for crimson clover, just like what I just put out today. I've been preaching crimson clover for months, actually for years. That corn is my best testament. It is the proof that's in the pudding. This is amazing. People that know corn don't even believe it's possible. Farm all fanatic don't believe it's possible. We're going to try to talk him into growing some crimson clover. There's one thing about it. Crimson clover grows in the fall and the spring. And even in the winter if it's not too cold. Soybeans only grow in the summer. So let's think about it. If a man grows soybeans in the summer, he can't grow corn in that field. So you're throwing away a corn year if you need corn if you want to grow corn i need corn for my silage for my cows so the worst thing you can do is let that field set over winter doing nothing but hold weeds if you do nothing with your field you can expect exactly what you put in to come out you have to fertilize it with with fertilizer there's no other way around it we work our field in the summer to grow corn we work our field in the winter fall spring to grow crimson clover and guess what it pays off big time i bought eight bags of crimson clover it cost me 640 dollars that planted everything i needed to plant and if i had not done that and waited till spring at planting time to fertilize that would have cost me fifteen hundred dollars minimum so by planting crimson clover i'm saving money oh and i'm feeding deer Oh, and I'm putting deer in the freezer. You know, I've got these boys that are just dying to help me put meat in the freezer. So there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Not to mention giving the bees a little bit of pollination before I go and rip it right out of their hands and plow it under, which I'm sorry, but I have to. And I've also been thinking about the fact that we're no longer in the experimental stage. Last year, I had this, this field in three different clovers experimenting we found out what we wanted to know. It's no longer an experiment time and it's no longer a time to be messing around. 2024 is coming up. We already know it's gonna be a crazy year. We already know that. We don't know how crazy. We don't know if it's gonna be 2020 crazy or worse, but we know people are probably gonna be doing some crazy stuff. I mean, for crying out loud, they fought and hurt each other over toilet paper toilet paper that's not a necessity folks 2024 what are they going to pull out of the hat what's it going to be you know the whole toilet paper craze was all brought on by saying there was going to be a shortage and that caused the shortage so what are they going to do next they proved they can manipulate the public to do crazy stuff that's all that's all they did get you some crimson clover don't buy toilet paper buy crimson clover that's where it's at because that is the future of your cornbread, of your feed for your cows, and really for anything you need to grow that needs nitrogen. That's the McGee spiel. The sun's going down. It's supper time. I'll see you later. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.